Pastor Ed here with Daily Devotions for Wednesday, January the 25th. We're looking at uh, the reading from Matthew 4, verses 18 to 25. Still looking particularly at verse 19, where Jesus said uh, to Simon, who's called Peter, and his brother Andrew, follow me, and I'll make you fish for people. Um, Jesus, of course, was a rabbi, uh, and he is asking uh, these two fishermen, and later, uh, as we'll note, uh, another um, set of brothers, James and John, also fishermen, to follow him, become his uh, disciples. The interesting thing about uh, discipleship um, under a rabbi in ancient times was um, young men would, would learn about the Bible, and um, uh, at a certain stage, they would, um, you know, they would just go on to learn their family trade and do something else. Uh, the best of the best would, would study a little bit more, uh, and then there would be a period where uh, the best of the best of the best uh, would be invited by a rabbi to follow and, and learn. Um, in other words, in those days, a disciple um, didn't just want to know what his disciple knew, but he wanted to be like his rabbi and do what his uh, rabbi said. So the best of the best of the best uh, would um, be called by the rabbi to follow him, to leave family and friends and um, the synagogue, the village, uh, and devote their entire lives to being like their uh, rabbi learning to do what the rabbi did, uh, and that of course then meant you know uh, meant what it what it was to to be a disciple. Um, the interesting thing here is that in the gospel uh, reading, uh, we see Jesus calling Peter and Andrew to come and follow him. Um, they're already fishermen, so obviously they're not following another rabbi. Uh, this means that they are not the best of the best. Um, the Bible tells us that they dropped their nets and followed him. Of course, um, they would have done that because rabbis were respected and they wanted to follow him. But um, Jesus is inviting them into uh, following him and being like him. Um, and again, the fact that they're fishermen uh, following in the family business mean that they uh, had not made the cut. They were not considered the best of the best um, by the by the other rabbis um, but jesus says he chose them they did not choose him or he tells us that in john 15 um, a rabbi chooses the disciples on the basis that they have the potential to be like him well what this says to us is that god believes in us he has faith in us that we could follow and be like him uh, and that's what our call to discipleship is based on. In my sermon on Sunday, I talked about that classic story of Steve Jobs trying to attract John Scully to become the uh, the, the CEO of Apple in the in the in the still early days, but when they were already expanding and growing, and it was getting too big for Jobs to manage, and uh, Scully kept resisting. They threw money, power, you know, everything, authority, um, and finally Jobs, you know, in a last ditch effort, said, "Do you want to spend the rest of your life selling sugared water, or do you want to uh, have a chance to change?" Of the world. Um, a fellow by the name of Richard Brown talked about going to visit the Biltmore Mansion in Asheville, North Carolina. I don't know if any of you have had a chance to do that. Uh, when we were living down in Georgia, we did it uh, actually several times. Um, apparently, it's the single largest home ever built in America. Uh, it, it proved so large and so expensive to maintain that even the Vanderbilt's millions uh, eventually couldn't sustain it. Had gardens, lakes, 16,000 acres of land, indoor swimming pool, a gym, even a bowling alley. It employed 140 people. And it was a monument uh, to the Gilded Age uh, that that uh, uh, was uh, gives us the stories of people like John D. Rockefeller and Commodore Vanderbilt and Andrew Carnegie. Um, and it's an amazing thing to see how these men were driven to build and amass unheard of fortunes. Their whole lives were consumed in money and power. They stepped on many other lives to get it. Uh, nothing really mattered to them at that point except getting more and more and more. Their singular goal was to be the, the richest man in the world. And the funny thing about it is that at the end of each of these men's lives, they realized that uh, when they realized their dreams, um, they decided to give all their money away. Why? Because they realized that, they, that we can't take it with us. They couldn't take it with them. And so they immortalized their names by giving their money to start universities, libraries, to help all kinds of charities around the U.S. Why? Money is no good in the afterlife. And so this Richard Brown asks us, you know, what is our life committed to? 
for a multitude of people today could be summed up, he says, in one word, uh, to be like the men who built America. Um, but even Christians, uh, even Christians are bowing before the God of mammon, and we do this even though we know that we can't take it with us. And so Richard Brown asks us the question again. Let me ask the, let me ask you again: To what or to whom is your life committed? Today's readings, today's reading from Matthew is about a group of men who are called by Jesus to be his disciples. Um, it's about Simon and Andrew, and then of course also James and John, four fishermen. But it's also about you and me because we've been called to be disciples as well. We've been called to be committed to something that's larger than all the money in the world, something that's eternal. Um, what does it mean to be a disciple of Jesus Christ? Do you want to sell sugared water the rest of your life? Do you want to do whatever it is that you're doing? And mo most, much if not most of what we're doing is good in and of itself. Um, but is that our central uh, only calling, I guess you would say? Or do you want to have a chance to change the world? That's what the, this, those first fish, four fishermen were asked, those first disciples. And it's the question that's asked of us as well today. Do you want to have a chance to help change the world? If so, follow me, said Jesus. Well, that's our devotion for this morning. We'll be back again tomorrow to continue our look at Jesus calling uh, his first disciples. Until then, take care. Bye.